All praises. We on live? All praises. All right. Shalom, shalom, Israel. Most high Christ bless. All praises to the most high. Welcome to Daily Bread. All right. Apologize for that first feed. We had to make some minor adjustments. Okay. Um, all right. So today's class. Hey, lower my mic a little bit. Hey, give us a thumbs up online. Let us know if there's uh, any issues with the audio or the camera, anything. Kill the music. So it is absolutely imperative. Thank you, sir. All right, let us know if there's anything. Please, Israel, if there's anything, any malfunctions or anything. That way our IT tech team can pick up the uh, discrepancy and fix it. Let me go to. All right, Israel. So we're gonna um, we're gonna rise and face Jerusalem. Send up prayers real quick. Thank you, the Lord, for another day. All right, brothers, uncover your heads, sisters, cover your heads. All right, we're gonna face these. All right. Here we go, Israel. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory now and forever. Holy Father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, we thank you for another day, Father God. We thank you for another day. We thank you for the chief things in life, Heavenly Father, for our clothing, our raiment, our shelter, our, uh, our health, Heavenly Father, for the food and the water. Bless our food and water that we're going to drink today. We thank you, Father God, for another day for waking us up. Father God, that we may serve you with joyfulness and gladness. Father God, we pray for our leadership, that you heal them, that you continue to bless them and open up doors for Israel united in Christ, Father God, that you encamp your healing angels round about them and heal our bishops, our deacons, our captains, our officers, soldiers, brothers, our sisters, the wombs of our mothers, Father God, that you continue to increase the nation of Israel, Heavenly Father. If it be thy will, Father God, continue to uh, increase the spirit of uh, faith, fear, and wisdom inside of us, Father God, that we may grow in the spirit, that we may continue to serve you so that we can please you, Heavenly Father. Father God, we thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for the nation of Israel. We pray that you bring forth more laborers into your vineyard, Father God. We know the harvest is much, but the laborers are few, and thine is the increase, Heavenly Father. Father God, we thank you. Continue to uh, pour in the spirit of humility and humbleness within us, Father God, that we may learn how to speak to one another, how to treat one another, Heavenly Father, that we may be charitable, hospitable, Father God, and be able to take counsel and uh, correction well, Heavenly Father. Father God, increase our spirits. We pray that you continue to increase the spirit of unity amongst us, Heavenly Father. Father God, we pray for the destruction and demise of our enemies, Heavenly Father, and those that hate us, Heavenly Father, those of the nation of Israel that, that are not repentant, Father God, we ask that you afflict our brothers and sisters, Heavenly Father, not putting them to death, not putting them to death but hopefully in, um, in, in the case that they will wake up, Heavenly Father, and that serve you, that they through affliction might seek thee early, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Heavenly Father, in your almighty name, in Jesus' name we pray, we say, Amen. All right, let's get it. Let's get it. Talk ain't cheap. It says, mind your tongue. Mm -mm -mm. Talk is not cheap. You know what they uh, say in the world uh, is that talk is cheap. Right, right. And, and it's true to some degree. But as we read the scriptures, we got to we gotta account for what comes out of our mouth. So right. we can't be reckless with the words that come out of our mouths. There's a way we, that's that's what we got to learn how to, you know, we got to learn how to kill the old man. The old man, the old woman would just run off at the mouth or we got to express everything that comes to mind. We feel like we have to express it. That that's the spirit that we deal with when it comes to repentance is now having to vocalize everything that comes to your mind. Are you going to be able to subdue that thing? And become a new creature in Christ, are you going to put on fringes of border blue? You're going to put on your dress and your hair wrap, but behind closed doors or with your little buddies and all that, you're still reckless with the mouth. That's that form of godliness. But let's get Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Let's start it off. 
Talk ain't cheap, and we're going to prove it. Talk is not cheap. That's why we got to mind our tongues. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. Hey, four. Put, put his mic up a little bit. Go ahead. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. There you go. Things that were written aforetime were written for us to learn from, okay? What was written aforetime? The Bible, the greatest history book known on the planet, okay? And we can find things that were written aforetime, okay? Uh, Old Testament, New Testament, Apocrypha. We can find the greatest wisdom known to mankind where? In the scriptures, okay? And these things that were written aforetime by our forefathers, okay, uh, we can now learn how to practice patience, it can comfort us in times of trials and tribulations, all right? And that we also uh, pray that we may have hope now that we understand prophecy and understand what's going to happen, the destruction and the aftermath that's coming. Now we can have hope in the scriptures, all right? Give me 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All right, really good scripture, man. Ah, that Romans 15 and 4. Get that Second Timothy three sixteen. I always I, and leadership would always start with that scripture. I'm like, man, that's a that's a powerful scripture there. Exactly. You know, give me that Second Timothy three sixteen. Second Timothy chapter three and verse sixteen. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. You see that? That's a powerful word too. Something that inspires you. Something that will inspire you. Okay. The scriptures are meant to inspire us. We were inspired through what? In the world, MBA, uh, a college career, uh, the white man's history, right? We were inspired by uh, wanting to become entertainers, whether it was a rapper, a singer, a dancer, a movie star. Those were things that inspired us in the world. But now, well, like, hold on. We could be greater than that. That's right. That's, that's a little temporary season that's a season of uh, what? How did Moses put it? And and uh, let's get that real quick. Hebrews. Matter of fact, I'm there. Let me read it real quick. You can stay where you at. Hebrews chapter eleven. Watch this. And verse twenty three. It said by Moses, uh, by faith, Moses, when he was born, he was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Watch this. Uh, verse uh, 24, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God, because there was a greater price and reward at the end of that, <laughs> right? Choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. So our people are inspired by the pleasures of sin for a season. You want to be a movie star. You want to be, you know what I'm saying? You you, you want to be on a red carpet and, uh, you know, Esau's kingdom, America. Um, the um, You want to live the American dream, okay? But when we read the scriptures, we realize we're greater than that. That's right. That stuff ain't even a drop in a bucket. That stuff ain't even a little speck of dust. You know what I'm saying? Now we have hope and it inspires us that we will be an eternal kingdom. That's going to reign forevermore. And that's that's so much more greater. All right. right. Let's read that. Uh, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. All scriptures is, is given by inspiration of God mm -hmm. and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. You see that? So that's what comes with being inspired. Now you have to understand, okay, so in order for me to strive to be great, to be a part of this great kingdom that's coming up next, once Esau's kingdom is done, we're going to have to be reproved. We're going to have to be corrected. There are things within us that we're going to have to examine ourselves. It's not going to come. Uh, a lot of us automatically think, "Yeah, there's, you know, I'm, 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 I'm in there. I'm, I should be good. I'm doing the bare minimum." A lot of us think the the, the kingdom's guaranteed for us, and it is not. Scripture says we are a filthy rag, and we will scarcely be saved. All right, finish that off. For instruction in righteousness. For instruction in righteousness. All right, so now 
Let's get Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 1. So talk is not cheap, family. Talk is not cheap. Let's see. Um, uh, and that's something that we wasn't taught. Uh, we weren't taught in, in the world is how to deal with one another properly. Uh, those good old days back in the days in the 80s and the 70s and the 60s where they knew how to speak to one another. You know what I'm saying? How they spoke professionally. And we're going to get into that. Um, now uh, it's glorified. I've seen this, man. I've seen this, and it is so irksome. I don't have. I'm not. I'm not going to play any videos or anything. But uh, there was one where the dad was literally uh, with his daughter, and he's arguing with his daughter, but playing around. And she's like, you know, she's snapping at, you know, whipping at the neck and right. snapping her fingers, and he thinking that thing is cute. And the mom is recording, watching, and I'm like, yo, she's going to grow up to seriously think that that's okay. Right, exactly. Oh, look how cute she is. She's snapping and, you know, no dad, this and that, and talking back to her father. And he's like, look here, little girl, like playing around with her, like, look here, little girl, I told you, you got to do this and that. And, and she's like, no, I ain't going to do nothing. You know, and she's not. I'm like, yo, they, they take this, they playing around. They over here, Justin, mm -hmm. he don't understand that this is going to, this is going to actually, she's going to become this person that he playing around. The script say, don't, don't cocker a, a, a child. Don't be playing with children. And he's sitting here playing with her. He's sitting here playing with her in regards to uh, arguing with her like that. She's going to become that same little entity that he playing around with. Don't even know. <laughs> yep. She's going to be like that with friends. Mm -hmm. She's going to be like that with people in the world. She gonna, I'm telling you, and it's going to be detrimental to her, uh, to her growing up, I'm telling you, it's gonna be detrimental because being ghetto and you know what I'm saying. And there's, um, there's mothers that do it with their with their sons. So it ain't like the father was the only one. I've seen that with little boys acting crazy and it's glorified. They holding little guns, got their little shirts off, right. got a medallion over there, and they and what's the thing that? How do you know what's in their spirit at that age? Because they're talking, just like a drug dealer. They're talking. Just like what we, what, what what our people in the world call gangsters, okay? We call them fools and niggas. That's what the Bible call them, okay? So that stuff right there is not to be glorified, okay? That stuff is not to be glorified, and that and and to teach our children that is horrible, man. That's that's horrible because they may we we're supposed to be the example. They're looking at us like, oh, he's letting me. He's letting me do this. This must be cool. This is okay. No, it's not. You're gonna you're gonna get shot by a cop. You're gonna get pulled over. You're gonna act and you're gonna talk reckless like that. And then you're gonna wonder why. Oh, why they kill my baby? Because you taught them to talk. You taught you taught them to talk like that. Mm -hmm. Manners. That's what I wanted to say. Manners. Mm -hmm. the, the manners that they used to teach us that are that the old school fathers and mothers, grandfathers, grandmothers used to teach us. Little things. Shh, don't talk to your mama that way. Get your hands off the table. Say prayers before you eat. Those little mannerisms, those things went a long way. All right, where are we at? Ecclesiastes 5 and 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 1. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God. So now when you're repented, the scripture says, keep your foot when you go to the house of God, meaning watch your mouth now that you say you're repented, you say you're repented. Okay, well, watch your mouth now. Be careful what you say. <laughs> Keep reading. And be more ready to hear. Be more ready to speak. Be more ready to hear. Our people are always ready to speak, yes. ready to talk, ready to teach. I'm here. I want to teach you something. I, you just it's your day one. You got all this, all these, all these leaders. You got all, you know, all these uh, officers, soldiers, and captains, and everything in the building. And you want to talk about the Illuminati? It's, it's, you just now, you want to entertain other brothers about your conspiracy theories? You know what I'm saying? Like you should be more ready to hear. You want to talk about? You know what I'm saying? The the chip and this and that and fall out because of that. Because you don't understand, because you're not, you not more ready to hear. You ready to speak and teach. The Lord going to remove you for being bold like that. It's a humble spirit to be more ready to hear. 
meaning be more ready to listen and learn. That's why you're here. That's why this is called a school. It's a place of learning. You shut the hell up, as Deacon Laba would say. Shut the hell up and learn. But because we just, we just niggas, we, we blacks and Hispanics, no, 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 no. I could teach you something. <laughs> you ain't never teach Professor Winitsky nothing in your community college. Uh, Mrs. The, the, the white teacher, Mrs. Jackson, you ain't never talk in her class in high school. You come up here around the men of the Lord, the smartest, most wisest men on the earth, you want to you, you wanna teach. Come on, man. Sit down. Read. Mm. Then, then to give the sacrifice of fools. Because that's what you're doing. You're giving the sacrifice of fools. That's what our people are doing. They're giving the sacrifice of fools. Okay? You're destroying yourself. All right? So play the humble card and listen. Come in, be humble, and be more ready to hear. Keep reading. For they consider not that they do evil. Now, how can you do evil? What is it talking about here? How can they do evil through your words? You can do evil through the words that come out your mouth. A lot of our people, brothers and sisters included, this is who I'm talking about, especially us in the truth, right? We're, we got that form of godliness. We got on our fringes, border blue. We come into the Sabbath. But a lot of things that you say that come out your mouth, you're actually doing evil. You're actually in sin. You break God's laws because of what you say. And one day, guess what's going to happen? You have to give an account for those words. You're going to have to give a payment for those words that everybody used to tell you, talk is cheap. It goes with the wind. Don't worry about it. Say what's on your mind. Once the words come out, they never come back. Oh, no, the, the, the words are being recorded, and we got to pay that. We got to pay for every idle word. We're going to get into that. Keep reading. That was it. Uh, keep verse 2. Verse 2, be not rash with thy mouth. Be not what? Be not rash with thy mouth. What does it mean to be rash with your mouth? Meaning don't be confident, okay? Don't be confident with your mouth. Don't be harsh. Don't be bold with your mouth. Read. And let not thy heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Before God. Now the eyes of the Lord are set in every place. So every, wherever we speak, we're always before God. We're always before God, even when we're uh, in a confined place all, by, all to ourselves. We're at home by ourselves. If we're at work or we're in the bathroom, we're in the car by ourselves uh, making phone calls. We are before God. We're like, oh, God's not around here. I can say what I want. I can do what I want. No. Don't be hasty to utter anything before the Lord. Because why? It's being recorded. Read. For God is in heaven, and thy upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. Let thy words what? Be few. Let thy words be few. Be few. There's an art to that. There's an art to letting your words be few. Can you do me a favor? Uh, look up the word summarize. Summarize. S U double M. S U double M A R I Z E. Give me the word summarize. We can take that off. Let's see what it means to summarize something. You got me, Aaron? All right. S U double M A R I Z E. I hope I, I spelled it right. Summarize. Uh, any 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 definition is good, Aaron. It, it ain't got to be Miriam. Where we at? All right. While we're looking for that, give me. Uh, oh, we got it. <laughs> I 
All right, while we while we looking for that, give me uh, Sirach 32, watch this, and give me verse 7. Sirach chapter 32 and verse 7. So, so Rock chapter 32 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee, and yet scarcely. Hold on, hold on, hold on, because the sisters, I think, I think they don't understand that this applies to them as well. Sometimes I'm telling you, our sisters read this Bible, it's talking about the men. They thinking it's, it's talking about, no, 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 no. If anything, it's especially for the women, because here in Babylon the Great, our sisters was taught to, they was taught to be more confident and, and cry aloud more than our men. Right. Our men, I'm telling you, our, a lot of our men, I'm not going to say, because <laughs> I'm from the East Coast. I'm from New York, Philly, and, and that whole area, you know, originally Philadelphia. But I know about the East Coast, Atlanta. The men over there are very bold, okay? Mm -hmm. So I ain't talking about them to, to a degree. But the sisters are even more bolder. The sisters out there in that area, whoo, they pounding on their chest, wearing Tims, mm. you know. They're bold just like the men. Uh, in the southern cities, the brothers are more timid. They're more shy. So they don't mind. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta try to get them to speak up and be like, "Hey, man, you know." Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't gonna take Captain's a car. He's gonna be like, "Let's just." I ain't gonna say. I ain't gonna say because he gonna, he gonna be like, "Why the hell you say that?" <laughs> you know. But he would always tell us, "Man, you gotta sound off, man. Like you got a pair." Let, that, there you go. That's the. That's how I'ma say it. Sound off like you got a pair, man. Because our men are very um, uh, feeb, like they're timid. They're very timid. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times this scripture here, it would be good for you sisters to meditate on scriptures like this because you're the ones, uh, you know, the scripture that says um, uh, a woman shall compass a man, even even when, even when in speech. she's Who do you see every time there's there's a, uh, a protest, a rally? Who's speaking up? Who's the first one in the front lines speaking at the protests and all that? Back in the 60s, back in the 70s and the 50s, it was the men. But now today, who do you see? The woman. The woman is always the one with the mic speaking for the people. With the men in the background, quiet as a church mouse. Who do you see front running these Christian churches? The woman. They call her the first lady. <laughs> All right, let's read that. Watch this. This is uh, Sirach. No, 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 no. Give me one second. We got summarize. All right. To tell, to tell in or reduce to a summary. Scroll down. To make a summary. Now click on summary. All right. Click on summary. Watch this. What does it say? One. He says, using few, a few words to give the most important information about something. Damn. You know, you got to practice that. And you'll get good at it. Mm -hmm. You'll learn how to say a lot by only saying a little. You'll learn how to say a lot by only using few words. It says using few words to give the most important information about something so that you're not long-winded. So that you're not, you're not going on and on and ranting. Because what happens when you're long-winded? By the time you get to that, over that first minute, nobody's listening anymore. You, be, you, you become monotone to them. Our people, their attention span ain't that long. You can take that down. Their attention span is not that long. Eventually, uh, you start sounding like Charlie Brown. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's hard, yeah, it's hard to keep our people's attention. So the scripture says it's best for you to summarize your words. That way... You can edify somebody using as few words as possible and giving the most important information. The Bible tells you to speak and summarize your speech. It tells you right here. Read it again. This is uh, Sirach 32 and 7. Come on. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee, and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. <laughs> and yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Watch. Look at verse 8. Let thy speech be short. Let what? 
Let the speech be short. So God is saying, when you speak to your brothers and your sisters, man, don't be long-winded. Get to the point. Get to the point. Drop the punchline already. You know what I'm saying? You see that a lot on Clubhouse, man. Yeah. They will They will go on there. We will ask them, okay, so who's the Greek and the Jew in Galatians 3 and 28? Well, this is the, 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 the scriptures talks about the yoke and this and that, and they go off into something completely different. They go off into eggs and breakfast and, <laughs> and, and milk. <laughs> they go off into something completely different, and we like, Yo, what, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. What is going on? Like, we just add, you brought up Galatians 3 and 28. Mm, now we right. want you to explain it. Now all of a sudden they feel like they, could, they can escape giving the understanding of what they said they understood mm -hmm. through, a, through, a, through, through an abundance of words. No, it's because when you hear people talk like that, that means they don't know what the hell they're talking about. That's really what it is. And then they try to throw in big words to make, make themselves sound good. Right. And then by the time they're done, you're like, okay, they, that sounded good. They follow your heart, follow your dreams. They're saying all this stuff that sounds good carnally in the world, that the speech that they use out there. And it's like, who was satisfied? Did anybody still do, – do we still have the understanding to the scripture you pulled? No. no. You just used a lot of, a lot of, a lot of verbiage – just to try to make yourself sound smart, but you don't you don't know the Bible. All right, read. Read it again, verse 8. Verse 8, let thy speech be short. Man, our people have a hard time with that. Sure do. Because they 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 know it all. They know it all. That's what <laughs> go ahead. Comprehending much in few words. Comprehending much in few words. This is also known as the definition of a summary. Summarize your speech. Don't be long-winded. Get to the point. Some of y'all sisters, you drive your husbands crazy, man. Because they go out, they, they don't get to the point. They talk, 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 talk. And it's like, oh, my goodness. He's going like this. Zoop, gray hair growing in as, as they speak. Zoop, another gray hair growing in. Zoop, gray hair is... As, he just listening. He like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Okay. You know what we say? We be like, damn, that's crazy. Nah, for real. Yeah, yeah. Get out of here. Damn, that's crazy. Nah, for real. Get out of here. And yeah. we really saying, oh my, <laughs> please, hurry up. Yeah, you're killing me here, man. You're killing me. <laughs> so it says, comprehending much in few words. Go ahead. Be as one that know it and yet hold it his tongue. You see that? Now that's the hard part. That's the hard part for our people. Be as one that knoweth, but yet you hold your tongue. That's called, that's somebody that has wisdom right there. Wait on your ministry. You know what I'm saying? Go back to Ecclesiastes. Give me chapter 3 and verse 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1. I want to try to get through these scriptures. Watch this. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven so God says there's a season there's a time for everything there's a time for everything sometimes it ain't you ever hear our people say nah I, didn't, um, I ain't got time for that right now because it's, exactly. they're literally telling you this ain't the time mm -hmm. but to everything there is a time there is a season, right? Keep reading. Uh, verse 2, a time to be born. Come on. And a time to die. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. Come on. A time to plant. A time to plant. And a time to pluck up that which is planted. You see that? So there's a time to put in work. And then there's a time to reap from the benefits of what you planted. Keep reading. A time to kill. Uh-huh. And a time to heal. There's a time to kill and a time to heal. This is what the Bible says. So there's going to be, one, you know, there's going to be, uh, that goes with, uh, what verse is that? Verse 8, where it says a time of war and there's a time for peace. Mm. So there's a time to kill and a time to heal, right? Mm. Uh, keep reading verse 3. A time to break down. A time to break down. Uh-huh. 
and a time to build up. So there's some sometimes there there's a time where you have to speak into your you know you have to your child has to has to have the fear of God when they see you where you got to speak roughly to them when they make mistakes but then there's times mm-hmm. also to build them up when they fall to show them look I'm not you know I'm not just here to spit in your face exactly. like that pastor <laughs> <laughs> you going to bring that up no no we ain't doing that <laughs> ain't the time right now it's definitely not the time Woo! Let me forget about that. that was horrible. Uh, but yeah, there's a time to you know uh, to criticize uh, uh, what they call it that constructive criticism. Okay, and then there's a time also to build up. All right, give me verse seven. This is uh, verse seven. A time to rend. Uh huh. And a time to sue. A time to sow. Go ahead. So. A time to keep silence. A time to what? A time to keep silence. There's a there's even times to keep silence. Like when the Sabbath class is on, it's time to keep silence. Like when the bishops, deacons, and captains are speaking, it's time to keep silence. When they're teaching, it's time to keep silence and take notes and learn. When your leadership is teaching you something, in your in the local schools, those those camp leaders in the leadership table, when they speak, it's a time for you to keep silent and learn. Learn what's being brought out, what's being taught. There's a time to keep some some brothers and sisters. Nah, they feel like, you know, they ain't got to keep silent. Mm, they got to talk. Go ahead. And a time to speak. And then sometimes there's a time to speak. You got to explain yourself. They're like, oh, no, no, no. We're going to give you, just like on Clubhouse, you got the floor. The floor is yours. Explain that BS you just brought up about the yoke. You're going to have to explain that. Because <laughs> I don't think Paul was talking about eggs. Yeah. You're going to you're gonna have to explain that. So. There's a time to a time to be silent, right? And a time mm-hmm. to speak. Give me Sirach chapter 9, verse 18. Sirach chapter 9, and give me verse 18. All praise. So you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, you are the real Jews that the Bible speaks of. We are the Israelites. All right. We got to right. come back to these law, statutes, and commandments that we lost during the time of sla- slavery by the hands of our oppressors and our enemies to keep us blind from the truth. That Christ is a black man, and we got to come back and keep God's laws. All these millions of religions, they're all meant to take you away from the laws of God when that's our only solution. Read what you got. Sirach chapter 9 and verse 18. Come on. A man of an ill tongue is dangerous. Mm, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get there with you because that was heavy. Read that again. A man of an ill tongue is dangerous. A man or woman of an ill tongue, of a nasty mouth, is dangerous, man. Reckless mouth of an ill tongue is dangerous. Read. In his city. In his or her city. These be the same people that got nasty mouths that what? That put out a hit on you, start fights, you know, kindle strife. I'm telling you, of an ill tongue. Ain't no communication of the laws coming out their mouth. Nothing, everything come out their mouth is irksome. Everything that comes out their mouth is foolishness. Read. And he that is rash in his talk shall be hated. He that is rash in his talk shall be hated. You see that? You bold, and all you do is murmur, complain, gossip. You use that mouth and that tongue that the Lord blessed us with right that we that that we are renting you use that that sense to just abuse it you know what i'm saying you use right. that to abuse it to speak crazy to go off at the mouth give me uh cuz we going to go back to that later give me Sirach 33 verse 4 Sirach 33 verse 4 talk is not cheap so you got to mind your tongue Talk is not cheap because we're going to have to account for those words. Read what you got. Sirach 33 and verse 4. Sirach chapter 33 and verse 4. 
prepare what to say, and so thou shalt be heard. What does it say? Prepare what to say, and so thou shalt be heard. The scripture says, prepare what to say, and you will be heard. So a lot of times when uh, you're dealing with your, uh, let's say, your leadership, or you wives, you're dealing with your husbands, you have to prepare what you say. You know what I'm saying? If your husband is Christ in the house, you don't just go up to him and just start blurting out, uh, you know, foolishness. You prepare what to say. You're like, let me show I come at him with wisdom according to the scriptures. Let me make sure because I don't want to use many, many words, even though the world taught me talk is cheap so that I could run my mouth. God told me use few words. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna, let me figure out how am I going to tell him so that he can understand without talking his head off, without being long-winded. Because a man can tell, like, man, this, this, this woman is a wise woman. She, you know, she'll say, she'll say what she needs to say, and it's over. You know what I'm saying? We can move on, and we understand. Same thing, you brothers, where, you know, with your leadership. When you, when you want to talk to your leadership, prepare what you want to say. Make sure, one of the ways for you to prepare for what you want to say, have a scripture in mind to what you're trying to, what you're trying to, uh, what do you call it, vocalize. You know, whatever it is you're trying, to, you're trying to tell us, if it's of God, then you would have a scripture with it. But if you don't have a scripture, uh, you may be going off emotional or opinions or who knows what. But the scripture says, prepare what to say. I do that a lot, you know, because here in Austin, we have, we have Bishop Kanai. Right. I can't just approach him any old way. I can't talk to him any old way. I have to prepare words the way, okay, let me see. I'm, I'm going to tell, I'm going to say it this way to make sure I'm being respectful, to make sure I'm reverencing. You know what I'm saying? It starts off with your speech. But our people be comfortable. They just be comfortable with whoever they speaking with. Um... Uh, but you know what? When they go to see the white man, they go to an interview, they prepare what to say. <laughs> For the white man, they prepare what to say. But when it comes to the men of the Lord, the greatest men walking the earth, huh? What? What? What do you want? Are you calling me? What's up? <laughs> That's how they talk to their leadership. No, I'm sorry. Excuse me, officer. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. That's how you speak. Man, I'll tell you, this Generation Z and, you know, I found out, man, I, I fall, I guess I'm part of the millennials. They, 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 I don't know who did the chart and who approved the chart, but apparently if you were born 1980 to 96, you're a millennial. So I'm a millennial. I'm like, yo, them little boys and girls that was born in 96, 93 and all that, I was born in 82. They don't know nothing about eight track players. No. And Red Fox and and uh, Ataris and Nintendos. How am I in line with? How am I compared with them? <laughs> how many? How do I fall in the same category as them? That don't make no sense to me. You know what I mean? Like, come on, man. We got to we got to revisit that chart and uh, make some modifications, man. Uh, but that Generation Z and believe it or not, millennials. Yes, a lot of '80s babies and '90s. Yes. I, I, unfortunately, a lot of them make us look bad, <laughs> and it is what it is. We lost a lot of our heritage. We lost a lot of our customs on how to honor the elders and the, the ancients, and you know what I'm saying? Like, now mothers are trying to be like, the, like their daughters and keep up with the young, with the young girls and twerk, too, and do, what they, and do everything that they do. It, it's it's sad, man. It's sad. You can tell we in the last days. Where are we at? Uh, Sirach, 34. 33 and verse 4. Verse 4. Thank you. It says, uh, prepare what to say, and so, and so thou shalt be heard, and bind up instructions, and then make answer. And then make answer. Bind up instruction, and then make answer. Okay? Give me Proverbs 10 and 19. Proverbs Chapter 10, verse 19. 
Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 19. In the multitude of words, there wanted no, not sin. So it says, in a multitude of words, there wanteth not sin. What does that mean? Somebody that talks a lot, somebody that's very long-winded, it says there lacketh not sin. Meaning that there's sin there. If somebody's speaking a lot, if somebody's trying to explain themselves and they got to and they got to go on and on and on. No, nah, the, the Lord says there's a red flag there. There lacketh not sin. Read. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. But he that refraineth his lips is wise. What does it mean to refrain your lips? Meaning you keep, you get to the point. You get to the point and you, and you uh, comprehend much speaking few words. You speak few words. You ain't got much to say. Okay. All right. Let's get uh, where are we at. Proverbs 17 and 27. So, yeah, it says, um, in a multitude of words, there lacketh not sin. You can hear it, man. You know, you know what we call it uh, when uh, you could tell somebody uh, trying to explain a fake doctrine to the men of the Lord on Clubhouse, and we're, we're asking them, but what do you mean? What are you saying? What? How do you, how did you get that from that? And they're just you could tell they be on the ropes and they be trying to tap. We call it tap dancing. Like yo, you tap dancing. Mm. You're not you're not answering the question. You're tap dancing. <laughs> That's what they be doing. That's because they're lack if not sin. There's evil there. They don't know what the hell they talking about. Mm. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter seventeen and verse twenty seven. Uh huh. He that had knowledge spurred his words. He that what? He that had knowledge. Spare his words. He that hath knowledge will spare his words. Meaning, I ain't got much to say. If you somebody that deals with knowledge, they're not talking all the time. They're not talking all the time. They spare their words because they know there's a time to speak and there's a time to keep silence. Go ahead. And a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. You see that? A man, a man or a woman that it has understanding, that's an excellent spirit. Because they ain't talking too much. They ain't got much to say. They let their actions speak for themselves. You know? And when they are speaking, they're speaking, uh, what do you call it? Soft answers. They're being uh, temperate. They're being uh, charitable, hospitable. They got good manners. You can hear it in their speech. When they do speak, you're like, damn. They got sound speech. We're going to get all those scriptures. All right, let's get uh, Proverbs 29 and 20. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 20. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 20. Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? You see a man that's hasty in his words? Okay, a man, that, that, a man or a woman that is hasty in their words, meaning they're, they're interrupting you. You sitting, there, you sitting there trying to show them and teach them something. They're like, no, 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 let me, let me talk. No, but this is what I'm trying to say. You see somebody that's like that, and, and you're like, you're looking at them like, hold on. First of all, uh, the scripture says, don't make yourself equal to your to your leaders. You're per, you're making yourself equal to your leaders. If they say, if they tell you shut the hell up, shut up. <laughs> Obey them to have the rule over you. No, 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 no. I gotta, I gotta, t I gotta say this. I gotta say that. And then you let them talk, and it's and it's foolishness. Read it again. See, it's thou a man that is hasty in his words. You hasty in your words. You can't control yourself. Read. There is more hope of a fool than of him. There is more hope of a fool than of him. Ooh, ooh, ooh. man. Give me Matthew 12, verse 35. There's more hope of a fool than of him. So you're worse than a fool when you're hasty in your speech. When you're quick to talk, when you're when you speak rashly, when when you're not quick to listen, the script says, "Be slow to speak, but quick to hear." Right? Mm -hmm. We'll get that later. All right, read what you got. Matthew chapter twelve. Watch this in verse thirty-five. This is the scripture that pr proves that talk is not cheap. Matthew chapter twelve and verse mm -hmm. thirty-five. Read. Matthew chapter twelve and verse thirty-five. A good man. Out of the good treasure of the heart, bring it forth good things. So it says, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart 
He brings forth good things. From what? From his actions and from his speech. Mm. A good man or woman, you could bring forth good things from your actions and your, and your speech. Because whatever's, this is the heart, right? When you read right. Matthew 7. In verse, I think it's 21, it tells you that the, the, the heart is right here. And everything that you utter first manifested where? In the heart. Read. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. He spews out evil things from his heart that eventually come out of his mouth. Okay, read. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Damn. Mm. So hold on. You got to pay for what you said. And it ain't right. going to be as cheap as you thought it was going to be. It ain't going to be cheap. Mm. It's going to be a big bill. <laughs> Remember you said this? They're going to they gonna, they gonna roll out the scroll and it's going to roll. It's going to roll like 100 yards. Honey yards down the field. Wow. They're going to roll. They're going to be like, you said this, you said that, you said this, you said that. You murmured here. You gossiped here. You was tail bearing over here. You was speaking evil of your leader, leadership here. They're going to pull out the, the scroll on you of all the words that came out your mouth. You busy thinking, I just got to give an account for the things that I do. No, 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 no. Those words that are coming out of your mouth as well. You disrespected your husband here. You told your, your, your kids they ain't ish over here. And then you went to a job interview and was completely nice to the so-called white man. Didn't give him a hard time at all. Read that again. But I, but I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. In the day of judgment. So guess what? The words that come out of your mouth can hinder you from getting the kingdom of God. Mm. The words that you say can hinder you from obtaining. You can lose the kingdom because of your slick mouth. You can lose the kingdom because you can't control your conversation. Because you don't want to change, because you put on that form of godliness, but behind closed doors, you talking recklessly. Keep reading. For by thy words, thou shalt be justified. Damn, for by thy words, you will be justified. Read. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. And by your own words will you be judged, will you be condemned. So talk ain't cheap. That's why you got to mind your tongue. We all got to mind our tongues. You got to prepare what, what to say before you say it. That's something that we wasn't taught in the world. All right, give me uh, Proverbs 18 and 21. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Mind your tongue. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Damn. You see that? Read it again. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21. Mm -hmm. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So it says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Damn. So you can either, your mouth, your mouth. Yeah, you got fringes and a border blue. You got a modest dress on. Dress on. You got a. Uh, you keep the Sabbath. Yeah, I get it. I get it. You keeping the laws. You kept. You keeping a new moon today. But you better watch what you say, though. Don't that that doesn't give you the that doesn't give you the green light to talk crazy. That doesn't give you a green light to be evil with your mouth, though. Just because you got on the appearance of evil, because death and life are in the power of the tongue. You could lose the kingdom because uh, you can, you'll receive death and damnation because of your mouth. Every idle word, we think, <laughs> we think it's never, when we utter the words, they ain't never going to come back. That conversation ain't never going to come up again. No, it's going to come up, and we got to give account. Read. 
and they that love it shall eat the fruit of it. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. and, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You see that? So you can eat the fruit of life or the fruit of death. You could choose which one, which one you love. I want to love, I want to speak righteously. I want to, uh, I want to, you know, be able to edify those. And, um, you know, you want to be able to always be a teacher, always be an example, okay, with right. the way you speak. Give me Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 26. Watch this, since we're already in Proverbs. Proverbs 15, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 26. Come on. The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord. It says the thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord. You see that? The thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord. Read. But the words of the pure are pleasant words. So what is the scripture letting you know? That your thoughts and your words go hand in hand. That's what the scripture is letting us know. Your thoughts, your words, they go hand in hand. Read it again from the top. It says, the thoughts of the wicked are an abomination to the Lord. Because the thoughts of the wicked are manifest through their words. You know what's on their mind in these C-SPAN channels and these CNN networks and their meetings and the wars and the drugs and the, and, and the uh, you know, the mosquito bite. You could see that their thoughts are evil and it manifests through their speech. Because your thoughts are your speech. It is who you are. And it manifests. That's why a lot of people say, fake it till you make it. Oh, you're not going to make it far then if you're going to keep faking. You're not going to make it far. Mm. Ain't going to be no fake it till you make it. You're not going to make it because you're faking. You need to work on yourself. Read. Mm. But the words of the pure are pleasant words. But the words of the pure are pleasant words. You see that? Pleasant words. Your thoughts and your words go hand in hand. Give me James 3. Let's read verse 1. James chapter 3 and verse 1. Read that. James chapter 3 and verse 1. My brethren, be not many masters. Be not many masters. Don't take, don't take on more responsibilities than you can handle. Don't meddle in matters that don't concern thee. Read. Knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. You see that? We're going to receive the greater condemnation. Read. For, any, for in many things we offend all. Mm -hmm. If any man offend, not in word, the same is a perfect man. Read into the, uh, speak into the mic. The same is a perfect man. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And able also to bridle the whole body. You see that? A perfect man is able to bridle the whole body, meaning he can control his whole body, his words, his mouth, his members. He can subdue those things. Read. Behold, we put bits in the horse, horse's mouth mm -hmm. that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. So what is this talking about, the bridle that goes in a horse's mouth, right? Now, a horse is a very powerful, strong animal that, guess what, if they wanted to run off, you know, if they wanted to take off and they wasn't tamed, they can do it. They can they can go and, and run 60 miles per hour. They're stronger than us. They're faster than us. But we put the bridle in their mouth and we can control them. You see that? So it's the same thing with our, ourselves. We got to put our own bridle on our mouths. You may be fast and quick with the mouth. You may know things. But you put that bridle in your mouth. And you wait because there's a time and a place for that. You humble yourself. So the Lord is saying we need to put a bridle on our mouths and control ourselves. Read. Behold also the ships which thou that, um, that they be so great. Which, and, which though they be so great. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And are driven of fierce winds. And they're driven and maneuvered by the fierce winds. Watch this. Yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whether soever the governor listed it. So it says these great, big, mighty ships, right? They're, they may be great. They may weigh tons and tons, 
right? And they're driven by fierce, strong winds, but yet they turn about with a very small helm. What's that? The little steering wheel. <laughs> mm. Or the, the, the pieces of cloth, the, 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 uh, what they call them, the sail, the sail things, you know? Uh, some of them are sail ships where they use that, uh, those uh, curtain-looking things. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But these are the small things that maneuver and, and guide these big, um, these big ships, these big, uh, what they call them, these big vehicles, right? Same thing with the analogy of the horse, with the ship, today, a car. How, how heavy is a car? All cars are different, different, so, different weights, right? You got, you got pickup trucks, you got vans. But how are you maneuvering and controlling that big old heavy car with a little steering wheel? The steering wheel is so light. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Read. Even so, the tongue is a little member. Even so, the tongue, which directs us just like the steering wheel, just like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Just like the sail ships. <laughs> just like right. a bridle where you guide the horse, you make him go left or right through his bridle. Come on. And boasted great things. And boasteth so the tongue is a little member, and it speaks great things. Come on. Behold, how great a matter, uh, a little fire kindle. It says, behold, a, how great a matter a little fire kindleth, meaning a little spark can create the whole, the whole forest to go up in flames. It's the same thing with our words. That little, that little word you uttered just created a bunch of discord in the body. Your little thought, well, I think so-and-so don't like you. That, I just said that with my little-ass tongue that weighs probably 0.3 ounces. But I just yeah. destroyed, I'm, I'm, I just destroyed so many brothers and sisters. And I put them at odds, to, and I put them at odds. I did all of that with what? With the tongue. That's why it says, mind your tongue, every other word. Read. It says, and the tongue is fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is a fire. That's why the Lord says, don't even use it. Don't play with fire. You're playing with fire when you talk too much. That lack if not sin. You're playing with fire. That's why he says, just be quiet. Just learn. Be ready to hear. Read. So is the tongue among our among our members. So is the tongue among our members. Watch. That it defiles the whole body. It defiles your whole body. It defiles your whole being. Read. And set it on fire, the course of nature. And it setteth on fire the whole course of nature. Come on. And it is set on fire of hell. And it is set to destroy. It's set to destroy. Especially if you're not, you're not, Letting your communication be of the most high and of the commandments. That's why the Lord says, be quiet. If you're not going to speak to oracles, be quiet. If you're not, if you're not trying to, if you're not coming with solutions, be quiet. If you only want to be emotional and opinionated, be quiet. People speak. This, that's how you know you, you a gossiper or you a talebearer or you a murmurer is when you're not coming with solutions. This is the this is the solution. Go Matthew 18. Go apply Sirach 19. Don't even yeah, don't even apply Matthew 18 because that's going to that that would get him kicked out over you trying to apply Matthew 18 because he stepped on your shoe. Are you kidding me? Or because he said something there was there was a misunderstanding. Apply Sirach 19 and admonish him that it may be that he had he, he didn't say it or he slipped of the speech. That's what Sirach 19 say. You trying to get people kicked out. I got a Matthew 18, you, because you stepped on my shoe. Or you talked about my cooking. You said my cooking ain't no good. You said it tasted that way. Everybody else liked it. Everybody else liked my bread. <laughs> All right, where are we at? Uh, James chapter 3, and let's read verse 7. James chapter 3 and verse 7. Come on. For every kind of beast... And of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed. Just like that horse earlier, right? It says, for every kind of beast and birds and serpents on the things in the sea is tamed. Meaning, you go to SeaWorld, and you see the, the killer whale. 
They call them killer whales. And they right. sitting and they was tamed by this little Edomite, this little Shedomite woman going like this with a hand. That thing jumping out the water, yeah. splashing back yeah. in, doing backflips. Yeah. It's been taught and tamed. And this is a great beast. This the killer whale. You know how big this thing is? You know, so it says for every kind of beast. What's another beast? A lion or those tigers or those bears. Oh, my. <laughs> they put them in a circus, plant these, these little things on a uh, on a little tricycle bike and juggling a damn bear. <laughs> hey, what Chris Rock? Chris Rock said this one thing on a uh, stand up one time off off the record. Um. The tiger turned on the owner and bit him. And they was like, oh, damn, the tiger went crazy. He was like, no, that tiger went tiger. That tiger went crazy when he was on a tricycle juggling the balls. That's when he went crazy. <laughs> he, he, he kicked back to his normal. You know, he, came, he was like, man, what the hell am I doing? I'm supposed to be a tiger. What are you doing in here with this little whip? I'm bite your neck off. The tiger came back to his senses. But... Uh, Esau, because the foundations of the, of the earth ride, of course, he, oh, he went crazy. No. That tiger went tiger. He's supposed to do that. He's a predator. Mm -hmm. All right. But it says every kind of beast and of birds. Okay? You got eagles, right? Eagles and, and hawks and all these beautiful birds that the Lord created, right? They land on this man's arm or, uh, you know, on their shoulder, and they'll, they'll, you know, they'll talk to him. They'll say, you know, they'll do things. You know what I'm saying? Little tricks. But they've been tamed. These are great, great animals that have been tamed. i seen this one documentary of a, a, a brother in Zebulon. This guy was one of the first guys to, to – um, everybody would go to Costa Rica to come see him because he would swim in murky waters with a crocodile. He had a crocodile that he tamed. A crocodile. He would go in there and wrestle with it and play with it. So the Edomite came and tried to do the same thing, and the crocodile started snapping on Like, he was about to go, because he got in the water, he was like, oh, he, was, he sounded like one of them Steve Irwin guys on National Geographic. It was on one of those uh, channels. So he's in the water. He was like, well, let's see if he acts like that. Today's the big day. After days of him walking with the brother that, uh, you know, that, that tame, you know, that had a pet crocodile, the, the pet crocodile would be around the family. He would come out of the water and go hang out at the house with the, with the daughter and everything. That's crazy. Yes, yes, I know. But what's, I mean, you can look it up. It's called, uh, what is it, uh, Poso, P-O-S-O, and the crocodile. You know, it's Costa Rica. So you type in those little words, you'll find a documentary. But it's, it's, it's real. The crocodile has since died. Like, it died about 15 years ago. But, um, but yeah, it would. They would respect the family and everything. But when Esau got in the water, yo, that enemy, crocodile <laughs> could sense this man was the enemy. And he had to get out the water. And 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 the owner of the crocodile was holding the crocodile back like, no, 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 get out. He don't like you. <laughs> <laughs> like a dog? <laughs> yeah, he had to hold his pit back. He had a pit crocodile. <laughs> he had to hold his crocodile back. I was like, man. Uh, even the crocodile know the devil the Bible speaks of. <laughs> All right, where are we at? Is that verse 7? So verse 7, go ahead. Uh-huh. It says, For every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea. So serpents, right? You see uh, those that piteous, who, who's going to pity a charmer that play with the snake, right? But you see a lot of them, though. They don't get bit. They go many years, and this is their profession, where they, they don't get bit. They have, they have uh, cobras that they've tamed. They sitting there doing little dances and all that and 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 uh and putting a damn cobra in hypnosis and all that. And the cobra's but the cobra was tamed. Who gonna play with a with a cobra? You see a cobra, what you gonna do? Run. We going I'm gonna take flight. I'm gone. I'm ghost. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. these things have been tamed. Read. And of things in the sea is tamed mm -hmm. and had been tamed of mankind. Meaning it's been tamed of men. Watch this. But the tongue can no man tame. But the what? But the tongue can no man tame. Damn. Mm. We done tamed all these animals. Mm -hmm. But the black woman? <laughs> <laughs> the Latin woman? 
<laughs> Good luck taming that. <laughs> the nigga in the world, that black man, that lat that Latino man. Good luck taming him. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> but the tongue can no man tame. Read. It is, it is an unruly evil mm -hmm. full of deadly poison. It is an unruly evil full of deadly, deadly poison. poison. That's why it says, let your speech be few. Let your speech be few, man. You know? You shouldn't have much to say because you got to give an account for those things. All right? Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 12. We're going to read down to 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 12. Read down. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 12. Come on. The words of a wise man. Mouth, or, uh, mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. You see that? The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool will swallow up himself. So he will move with grace. His, his, his speech will be seasoned with salt, and we'll get that. But it says the lips of a fool will swallow up himself, meaning that that's why a lot of times – when you hear the, the the bishops, deacons, and captains, even on Clubhouse, they'll be like, let them talk. Let them talk. They're going to they gonna cut they self. That's what it means. They're going to swallow themselves up. They're going to they gonna expose themselves with all – them trying to tap dance and, and act like they know what the hell they're talking about. They're like, no, let them talk. We're going to give you a minute to talk because we're going to hear nothing but contradictions in your speech. You setting yourself up. You swallowing up yourself. You see that? But it says, but a man that is gracious with a speech, he already prepared what to say. He prepared a scripture. He know what he going to I'm, I know, I know exactly. Like, they already know, you know, they already proactively, proactively ready right. spiritually with a scripture to tear down what this person just said. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, look, he about to set himself up. All They end up contradicting themselves. All right, let's go to uh, where we at? Verse 13. Read. The beginning of the words of his mouth is foolishness. You can hear it in, in their speech. Uh, 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 a wise man discerneth all things. You can hear it in their speech. You, a lot of times, Deacon Laba would be like, yo, don't even deal with this person. Put them in a the box. Like they, they, yeah. you, he could tell them, we're like, hold on, Deacon. They, they, might, they, might, they, might, they might come to a Deacon be like, nah, bro, I'm telling you right <laughs> now. Like. This person is is here to to try to uh try to teach, and then lo and behold, we give them a little bit of mercy. And what are they doing? They not taking a correction. They trying to teach, and it's like, damn, they right. called it from the jump, called it from the beginning. <laughs> Go ahead. And the end of his talk is uh, mischievous madness. Where's it? mischievous madness? You hear that? The end of their talk is mischievous madness. Now it's like everything you just said. Put a spirit in the room. We got to come in here and clean this up now because everything you just said was foolishness. Yeah. Let's clean up what you just said because everything you just said didn't make no damn sense. Mm -hmm. It was mischievous madness to create confusion. That's all it is. We trying to, we trying to do away with the confusion. Mm -hmm. They trying to – they, they uh, because they know we're going to let them speak, they're like, let me go up there and cause confusion because – these niggas don't know what they talking about. But I know I got the magic precept. Let me go in there and uh, hit them with that Galatians 3 and 28. They ain't heard that one yet. <laughs> oh, man. All right, where we at? Read verse 14. Verse 14, a fool also is full of words. A fool is full of words. You see that? A fool also is full of words. A fool talk too exactly. much. Let your speech be few, comprehending much, using few words. Speak scarcely when thou art twice asked. You see what I'm saying? Plead the fifth, man. <laughs> mm. Go ahead. A man cannot tell what shall be uh -huh. and what shall be after him. Who can tell him? Who can tell him? Who can tell him? 
Uh, just wanted the first part of that. Give me second Ezra's. Watch this, 14 and 34. That's why every time we speak, we also say, if it be the Lord's will. You know what I'm saying? We don't speak boldly. You know what I mean? Because we don't know what's going to happen the next day. You know, we don't know if we're we going to be alive. We got to pray to the Lord, you know. That's why we thank the Lord when we wake up to be able to hear these classes. Go ahead. Is it 14 and 32? Uh, what did I tell you to get? Uh, Second address? Yes, 14, 14 and 34. Yes, sir. 34. Yes, sir. Watch this. Hey, give me that definition also, subdue. Read what you got. Second address, chapter 14 and verse uh, 34. 34. Yes, sir. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding. You see that? You got to subdue your own understanding. When you first come in this truth, and a lot of times, even for you brothers and sisters that's been in four plus years, that don't that still don't be like, okay, now now's my time. No, it's not. No, it's not. You still got to be, uh, you got to remember your first love when you came in with that humbleness and that humility when you first walked in through the doors. Now, you know what I'm saying? You still got to have that spirit. No, now you comfortable, now you want to talk crazy with your mouth. No, you still got to have that same cautious, uh, that same, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, what's it say in Matthew 18 and 1? It says, you know, the, him that be like a child, you know? You got to have that that humble mentality that I'm still learning. I still got a lot to learn. Four or five years, that means you're only four or five years old. You're still a babe. You're still a child. Deacon Malachi always says that. Oh, how long you been in the truth? I've been in eight years. Well, guess what? You eight years old. You a baby. You still in single digits. That goes with me. I'm I'm a baby. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. But that that's the stuff we need to hear to keep us humble. We ain't been in the truth long. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. When you look at our leadership, you put you put on all all the all the uh years that they've been in the truth, bro. A hundred plus years of knowledge and wisdom, of leading by example of trials and tribulations, of councils. Mm. But we got a little four or five years, and we feeling like, oh, we, we equal now. You crazy. You out, your, you, out, you out your mind. Something ain't wrong with you. Subdue your understanding, man. Read the definition of subdue. It says, subdue, to get control of a violent or dangerous person of a group by using force punishment. So that goes into, like, um, like the police, right? Uh, they have to detain somebody. They got to subdue them. Go to the second one in context. Scroll down. All right, read that. This is the one. Read. To get con to get control of something. Such as what? Such as a strong emotion. Such as a strong emotion. You hear that? Control your emotions. Mm. Control your emotions. The more you control your emotions the easier they become to subdue, the easier they become to control. But you have to control your emotions. Subdue them. That's what it means. Get, uh, give me the synonyms. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Uh, matter of fact, let's read those. Go up. Scroll up. Right here. To conquer and bring into subjection. Control. What is this talking about? Your mouth. Your words, bring, bring your words into subjection. Conquer all that, all that talk you feel like you need to do. Kill that stuff. Here we go. To bring under control, especially by an exertion of the will, meaning my will, my motivation, my driving force to get the kingdom. And so I know my biggest enemy is my mouth, so I need to shut the hell up or I'm going to lose the kingdom. Because it says you will be judged by every idle word that comes out of your mouth. I don't care how many times you was helping in the kitchen, in the security team, in whatever. He says you will be judged by every idle word. To bring under cultivation, to reduce the intent. Okay, go to synonyms. You see that? Beat, conquer, defeat. Over, overbear, overcome, 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 overcome the fact that you think you know everything. Come to the realization 
and to the reality that we don't and that we need guidance and that we need our leadership. All right, take that down. I got all these other scriptures I got to get to. All right, where are we at? Uh, read that one more time. Second Ezra 14 and 34. It says, Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding uh -huh. and reform your heart. You reform your heart. You change your ways. That's what it means. Change the way that you speak. Change the way that you talk to your fellow brother and sister. And we're going to give you the solutions. Read. Ye shall be kept alive. You shall be what? Kept alive. But I got these beautiful fringes on. I thought the beautiful fringes is going to keep me alive. No, all of the commandments go hand in hand, family. Read. And after death, ye shall obtain mercy. And after death, you will obtain mercy. Why? Because you submitted to your husband. You didn't talk back. And you husbands, you, 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 spoke, uh, you spoke comfortably and peaceably to your, to your wife. You wasn't a lion in the house and frantic. You wasn't always roaring in the house because there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, men out there like that too where they destroy their own home because of their mouths, because they too loud. They want their wife to be quiet and be humble, but they themselves are emotional and speak and, and always got a roar at a lamb. Your wife is a lamb. You a lion. What you look like roaring at a, uh, at a, at a lamb? What do, you, what do you look like? You supposed to be the lion. What you doing roaring at a lamb? The lamb, bang, you over there roaring. What kind of lion are you, man? But you ain't roaring in them streets to teach the people. You're not out there roaring to teach the people, though. You ain't crying aloud out there, but you're roaring in the house to a little lamb. Your, 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 your wife. Come on, man. Where we at? Uh, that was verse 34. Okay, Ezra. subdue your own understanding, reform your hearts. You shall be kept alive, and after death, you shall obtain mercy, because there's no such thing as YOLO. After you die, you gotta, we all got to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. We all got a report, okay? There's no such thing as YOLO. God ain't sweet like that to where you just go on YOLO and live your best life, and when you die, everything's over. No, you played yourself. You're going to realize you played yourself. You're going to see a big black man, a big black powerful man in front of you, That's and his right. name is Jesus the Christ. And you're going to be like, what? What? I, I thought it was YOLO. I thought, I, was, uh, I thought it was it. Who brought? Who, who woke me up? I was resting in my grave. <laughs> nah, Negro. Nah. Just you didn't believe in that Bible. You didn't believe my prophets when they were sent to you. Now look. All right. Where we at? Give me Sirach 2817. Sirach chapter 28. Watch this. Sirach 28. So the way you speak has a lot to do with who you are as an Israelite. Okay. Read what you got. Sirach chapter 28 and verse 17. Come on. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh. We learned that in slavery, didn't we? We oh, got yes. whipped to kingdom come. We was, whoo, we had some stripes. Go ahead. But the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. It says, but the, but the stroke of the tongue hurts more. So when you hear that, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, that's a lie. Mm. Words hurt. It says it breaketh the bones. When you think of the bone, the, the whip only hurts the outside of the flesh. Right, right. But it says the stroke of the tongue. or the what, What's it say? The stroke of the tongue? It says, yeah, but the, but the Go ahead. But the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. You see that? But you can destroy somebody, man, with the words that you use or how you deliver it, the delivery of your message. Are you, are you trying to build or are you trying to destroy? Are you edifying, you know, uh, grace unto those that are listening? Or, or are you only trying to destroy and, you know, are you trying to completely shut somebody down? What are you doing? You got to ask yourself. That's why we got to re gotta reform the way that we speak. Okay? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. We got to go through these scriptures quick. 1 Corinthians 15 and 33. Watch this. And then we're going to go back to Sirach. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. Bring it up. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupt good manners. You can corrupt 
good manners. You can hurt, you can destroy your family. If you're the type, evil communication is always coming out of your mouth, those spirits, that evil communication brings spirits that's going to jump on other brothers and sisters. And they're going to think it's okay to talk like you. That's why I remember when I first heard this truth, I remember listening to other, uh, when, when I wasn't with IUIC, I wasn't with any camp. And I was looking at all the other camps, and I was like, damn, I'm going to have to join one of these camps. I, I got to get in this fight. I understood that. Mm -hmm. And as I'm looking at certain camps, certain camps was just throwing F-bombs and just, and just yeah. B-I-T-C-H, this white woman. And, and I'm just like, man, I ain't, I ain't finna do all that. Like, <laughs> come on, man, is that really necessary? And all praise to the Most High, he led me to IUIC because when I first heard them, I was like, these men are a lot more professional. They ain't got they ain't got other nations licking their boots. <laughs> they ain't putting spit in their hand and putting it on people's faces. <laughs> I was like, you know, I was like, all praise to the most high, he led me to the truth. Uh, but evil communication corrupts good manners, man. You know, give me that. Watch this. Sirach 23 and 15. Evil communication will corrupt good manners. That's why you gotta have righteous communication. Read what you got. This is Sirach chapter 23, verse 15. The man that is accustomed to appropriate words will never be reformed. All the, all the days of what? All the days of his life. You see that? So it says the man, where we at? 15. Verse 15, it mm -hmm. says, the man that is accustomed to appropriate words will never be reformed. Isn't that what we just said, subdue your own understanding? Meaning yeah. you got to learn how to speak so that you could be reformed. You ain't never going to be reformed, a.k.a. changed, if you're accustomed to using appropriate language. Do we have the definition of appropriate so we can show them real quick? Did I send it to you? If not, it's okay. No? Okay, so appropriate language goes into cursing. You're always cursing. F this, F that. B-I-T-C-H this and... Well, well, the bishops and deacons in them curse. Okay, when? Like once in a blue? Like, you know what I'm saying? We all going to curse once in a blue, but it says he that is a custom where they just throwing F-bombs and they just, you know what I'm saying? Every now and again, we be like, man, he's an idiot or he's, he's a dumbass. And those ain't even curses, you know? Those ain't even curses. But those brothers and sisters that are accustomed to always swearing, Always cursing. You can't control. You can't control that. You're gonna destroy your house. You're gonna destroy your marriage. You're gonna destroy your children. You're gonna destroy them. Why? Because you speak very, very unprofessionally. Let's get that real quick. Watch this. Hebrews ten and twenty three. Hebrews chapter ten and verse twenty three. Of opprobrious. Okay. All right. Put it up when you get a chance. Go ahead. Read that. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23. Go ahead. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Let us what? Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. So, brothers and sisters, if you are an Israelite, you keep in the commandments of God, you represent, you, you represent Israel united in Christ. This is your profession. You should be professional. Who goes into a job interview throwing F-bombs and, and, and curse opprobrious language? So when you go to make an impression on Esau, you're in your best behavior, but around your brothers and sisters, you just loose with your mouth. It's okay to be unprofessional, unprofessional and use opprobrious language all the time. Watch this. Opprobrious. Expression of opprobrium. Go down, get the synonyms real quick. Synonyms. Opprobrious. Abusive language. You see that? Something with the intent, you know, to, to hurt, to uh, use, um, to destroy someone, right? Uh, Skirl, scurrilous, truculent, retrilic, those are some big words. Go to, hey, hey, let's click on one. Go to contem, let's see what that means, contemnelius. You see that? Instantly abusive and humiliating, okay? Good luck pronouncing that, contemnelius. Contemelius, contemelius. <laughs> you gonna, you ain't gotta do that. All right, it's okay. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a little slow. It's okay. Uh, insolently abusive and humiliating with what? With words. You see what I'm saying? Let's go back. 
So that's evil communication that will corrupt good manners because you have an intent to abuse and to humiliate someone with the words that come out your mouth to break their bones, to, that, that hurts. You know what I'm saying? That crushes their spirit. You crush people's spirits. But we're supposed to be what? Read that Hebrews 10 again. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering. Without wavering. So this is a professional walk. Every day, you have to be professional every day at all times. Are you going to throw an F-bomb every now and again? Probably. I know I do. I know I do. Every now, you know, I might say F, and I'm like, man, you know. But I try to make sure that I keep it to a very, very minimal. You know what I'm saying? You don't want your kids or the people, you know, if you're a leader and all that, you don't want to be accustomed to opprobrious language where you can't control yourself when it comes to opprobrious language. Okay? Give me uh, 2 Corinthians 6 and 3, because this is what happens when you're accustomed to appropriate language. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 3. Where are we at? Read what you got. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 3. Give no offense in anything. Give no offense in anything. Read. That the ministry... Be not blamed. You see that? Because they see you. They're like, oh, you with Israel United in Christ. you throwing all these F-bombs. When you do that around people that's in the world, they look at you like you still a nigga. Or you still a chick in the world. They be like, shit, you just like me. You throwing F-bombs. I thought you was in that Bible. I thought you was a leader in, in one of those churches. You over here, you know, sounding like me. That's how they're they going to think. They're like, you're you not professional. You know what I'm saying? They're like, what kind of leader are you? So you got to be mindful, man, with your speech around, around people in the world. You got to be mindful also with your speech with brothers and sisters in this truth. You got to be mindful of your conversation. Because if not, you can shame the ministry. Read it again. Giving no offense in anything. Don't get, Because now you can offend also. And now that you've offended, now they were thinking about congregating, but when they heard your mouth, hell no, I ain't going there. They, they ain't changed. You sound like them Christians. You sound like them Catholics or them Muslims. You sound just like them. Ain't nothing professional about you. Mm. You got to be a light, and that light also ain't just, ain't your fringes and your border are blue and your head wrap. That light is also the words that come out your mouth. Read what you got. That the ministry be not blamed. That the ministry be not blamed. Talk ain't cheap. Mind your tongue. Give me that. First Peter's 1 and 15. 1 Peter's chapter 1, verse 15. We're going to go through this fast, these last few scriptures. 1 Peter's 1 and 15. Read that. 1 uh, Peter's chapter 1, verse 15. Mm -hmm. But as he which hath called you is holy. Mm -hmm. So Meaning you, if you holy, you're supposed to be different. You ain't supposed to speak the same as the people in the world. Go ahead. Or act the same as the way why other worldly wives act. You're not supposed to act like them. As an Israelite wife, you're supposed to be holy and different. As an Israelite husband, you're supposed to be holy and different. Read. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Be holy in all manner of conversation. You see that? Meaning you're supposed to speak differently also. If you say you different and you holy, because that's what holy means, you separated from this world, you a different entity, you're an Israelite who lets their light shine, well, then your conversation has to show that as well. Your mouth, your reckless mouth that our people, I'm telling you, our people is loose, loose with it. They bad with, with, with uh, they, they, don't, they don't try to improve their vocabulary. Improve your vocabulary. A lot of people that curse, they curse because they can't explain it with professional words. So that's your only way out. That is the that you know what I'm saying? It's a show. It it, it kind of you know it could be if you use appropriate language all the time, you're incompetent. That's what it means. You have no other way of formulating a thought professionally by according to the scriptures. Okay, let's uh, read that one more time. Uh, First Peter is one and fifteen. Fifteen. But, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye 
holy in all manner of conversation. In all manner of conversation. Here's an example of how to be holy in all manner of conversation. Matter of fact, let's stay here. Go to uh, chapter 4 and verse 11 real quick. This is one example. This is going to fall in, in line with what I was going to get next. Read that. Um, First Peter chapter 4 and verse 11. Uh-huh. If any man speak, let him speak as the articles of God. Stop. So this scripture reminds me of Deuteronomy 6, where it says when you speak to your children, mm -hmm. when, you put them, when, when you wake them up, remind them about the commandments. When you walk by the way, talk to them about the commandments. Speak the oracles of God. When you see them, uh, what do you call it? When you're putting them to bed, mm -hmm. speak about the commandments of God. Tell, go into the scriptures. It should be the oracles of God at all times. And if that gets boring for you, then, then that's your fault. You're not in the spirit. You're not, you know what I'm saying? We're going to have small talk. I get it. You're going to have small talk. I understand that. You know? We're going to talk about things that we like, little hobbies here and there. But that you should be prioritizing the oracles of God over all things. Right. Okay? Speak the oracles of God continually. Watch this. Sirach 9 and 15. Sirach 9 and 15. You should be addicted to the ministry of the saints. You should be addicted. Read what you got. Sirach chapter 9 and verse. Verse 15. Come on. Let that talk be with the wise. Let your talk be with the wise, meaning not the people in the world, not your family members. You should be communicating primarily with brothers and sisters that are like-minded like you. Because if you're speaking more to worldly people, guess what your conversation is going to sound like? It's going to sound like them. You're going to be gossiping like them. Yo, you heard about cousin so-and-so? Bro, bump that, man. Call, call your sister in the truth, man. Read some scriptures. Go over, hey, sis, this is, you know, I had a, uh, I did something good for my Lord today and this and that. Look, I cooked this meal up. You over here entertaining uh, Cousin Ray Ray and Uncle, ha Uncle Larry and them and their conversation. You going to start sounding like them. That's why God says let your talk be with the wise, man. Because the, the discourse of, of those in the world is irksome and foolish. Their discourse, their conversation is irksome. I can't, I can't talk to to. My dad and in the world and, and any some of my family yeah. members that don't keep the commandments, bro, they, they got like, you got one minute. Go. Because after this minute is up, all right, well, you ain't going to tell me nothing about you. Yeah, I'm keeping the laws. Yeah, you coming to the school? You congregating? What'd you read today? Like, <laughs> yeah. I ain't got much time. I ain't got, I ain't got much to talk to you about because you not, we, we don't see eye to eye. Yeah. Can two walk together? We can't talk together unless we be agreed. Right. Go ahead. Let, let that talk be with the wise uh -huh. and all thy communication. And some? All thy communication. About what? And the law of the most high. Whew. Let all thy communication be in the laws of the most high. All your communication, okay? Watch this. So this is how, now we're going to get into how we're supposed to be communicating with one another. Give me uh, Proverbs 15 and 1. And we're going to go through these quick so we can close out. This is how you can improve your speech, okay? Learn how to talk to one another, all right? Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1. A soft answer, turn, a, uh, turn it the way wrath. A what? A soft answer, turn it the way wrath. It says a soft answer will turn away wrath. So should we go... Should we render evil for evil? You loud with me, I get loud with you. I'm roaring like a lion. No. You sounding off like a little lamb. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we going back and forth. Is that getting us anywhere? No. no. This is a soft answer will de-escalate all that foolishness. A soft answer will de-escalate uh, contention and strife and arguings. You should want peace in your life. Less wrinkles, less gray hairs, better health. The fruits of positive communication and not fighting is longer life, <laughs> is looking more healthier, looking younger. So why entertain drama? Y'all want to wait till y'all get wrinkles and gray hairs and turn 45 before y'all say, all right, I ain't got the energy for this drama. <laughs> yeah, you just wasted all 45 years of your life fighting and clawing and scratching and, and 
fight in every battle instead of picking your battles wisely and seeking counsel. Where are we at? Uh, verse 15. Okay, let's go to, so a soft answer will turn away wrath. Give me Galatians 6 and 1. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1. Yeah, Galatians, yep. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such and one in the spirit of, me of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. You see that? So it says, restore someone in the spirit of meekness. So you're supposed to correct and, like, if you do have to correct someone, you have to restore them in the spirit of meekness. And what else? Read it one more time. Brethren, if, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such um, and one. If, if you are spiritual, meaning you keep the commandments, not if you're doing yoga or tai chi or meditating Indian style with incense around you, no. If you're spiritual, that means you're keeping the commandments of God. According to, uh, what's that, 1 Corinthians 14 and 37. Right. Okay, spiritual don't go into you smoking a blunt, smoking weed. That's not spiritual. That's demonic, satanic behavior. To be spiritual is to keep the commandments of God. So if you are spiritually minded, you're going to what? You're going to restore a brother or sister in the spirit of meekness. Read. Restore such a, and one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself. Lest thou also be tempted. You see that? So because why? Because we are prone and liable to making the same mistake that that brother or sister made. So we got to consider ourselves. We be like, no, that can never be me. Okay, you, if you say so. If you say so. You know what I'm saying? You'll only find out during that time of your trial and tribulation. Only time will tell. Right. Give me Sirach chapter 6 and verse 5. Sirach chapter 6 and verse 5. Read that. Sirach so chapter 6 and verse 5. Come on. Sweet language will multiply friends. What does it say? Sweet language will multiply friends. That's the first impression when you deal with a lot of brothers and sisters. Sweet language will multiply friends. You got to learn how to deliver a message, okay? That don't mean we soft and we Christians and, you know, like you're, like your wicked pastors. No, don't get it twisted. But it does say sweet language will multiply friends. So you got to know how to speak to people. Some of y'all don't know how to speak to one another. You got to examine your spirit because one day the way you're speaking to the, uh, brothers and sisters, somebody's going to speak to you that way and you're not going to like it. You better be able to eat it because you've been talking to people many years like that. You've been dealing with the brothers and sisters for many years like that. So one day it's going to be your time. That's why it's best to do what? Level with people and uh, sweet language will multiply, meaning now people will feel more comfortable around you. You're more easily approachable as a leader as well. But this is going out to a lot of leaders as well, you know, you soldiers and officers. We got to understand, we got to know how to talk to people if we want uh increase in the congregations. Okay? Was that it on that? No, sir. There's Finish more. that off. And a fair speaking tongue will increase kind greeting. You see greetings. that? A fair speaking tongue will, inc will increase kind greetings. Hey, shalom, most high Christ blessed with a smile. Not with a shalom, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, man, it's okay to crack a smile every now and again. I understand, you know, hey, there's a scripture that talks about uh, a righteous man uh, smiling scarcely. That's, that's true, too. So when y'all brothers and sisters see brothers that don't smile all the time, don't think, oh, you're not in the spirit. The Bible don't say that. If there's a brother that's serious or sister, then that's how they are, you know? But don't, don't have that countenance and be nasty with your mouth. Now something is wrong with you. Okay? So fix that. Where we at? Uh, give me Ephesians 4 and 29. Ephesians 4 and 29. Read that. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Come on. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Let no opprobrious language come out of your mouth, meaning curse words, okay, and uh, murmuring, gossiping, tail-bearing, okay, evil speaking. Don't let that stuff come out your mouth. Read. But that which is good to the use of edifying, mm -hmm. that it may minister grace 
unto the hearers. Meaning if somebody's not going to learn something righteous, you know what I'm saying? If they're not going to learn something good from your speech, then shut your mouth. Don't, you know what I'm saying? It says only speak to edify, to be able to edify the people. So that it's, it's something that they could use, they could use that in everyday life to make themselves better, that it may minister grace to those that are listening to you. Okay, where are we at? Let's go to uh, Colossians 4 and 6. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6. Read that. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6. Let your speech be always with grace. Isn't that what Paul just said in Ephesians mm -hmm. also? Read. <clears throat> Seasoned with salt. To what? Seasoned with salt. Seasoned with salt, man. Put some of that uh, chicken rub in your speech. Hey. <laughs> put some, some put some adobo in your speech, man. Some of y'all y'all speech is dry. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? Put some positive enthusiasm, some fire in your spirit, some uh have some life in you, man. Put a crack. You know, that's why it's good to crack a smile. It's good to, you know what I'm saying? You brothers and sisters, you know what it is? Sometimes brothers and sisters get used to seeing everybody. Mm -hmm. This COVID-19 has showed me how much I miss my brothers and sisters. I was happy Happy to see Soldier Matthias, man. I was happy to see Soldier Aaron. I haven't seen my brothers in so long because the school been shut down. But these are the things. When you when you meet and you greet the brothers, you know what I'm saying? You do it. You have life in you. Early in the morning. I got to do this class. No, man. Come on, man. Who want to deal with somebody like that? That's a, a grouch. You an Oscar the Grouch. You coming out the trash can. <laughs> You got spackle in your eye, you know what I mean? You ain't, you ain't, your hair's all messed up. <laughs> Shalom, most high Christ bless. Man, if you don't fix your spirit, you know, let, you, let your speech be seasoned with salt. Read. That ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. That ye may know how you may answer every man. You, that way you know how to speak to the people. You know how to speak to your friends, your brothers, your sisters. You know how to speak with them. All right, give me uh, Psalms 50 and 23. And then we only got one more, and after that, we're done. Uh, Psalms chapter 50, verse 23. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 50 and verse 23. Read. Whoso offer it praise, glorify it me. Mm -hmm. And to him that ordered his conversation, all right, will I shew the salvation of God. You see that? So to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God, meaning he's going to get salvation. So every idle word that come out to the mouth, you got you to gotta account for. Not just your actions, but even your speech. Your speech as well. Talk ain't cheap. You got to pay, pay for those things you said. You got to pay for the way you was talking back to your Lord. You gotta pay, you gotta pay for how you destroyed your 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 help meet. How you didn't build her up, how you didn't teach her according, you didn't teach her according to the knowledge of God, like it says in 1 Peter 3. Dwell with them according to knowledge. You didn't do that. You was a lion in the house for you husbands. You gotta account for that stuff. You but if you order your conversation aright, you will obtain salvation, the salvation of God. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 1. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 1. Come on. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 1. Come on. Comfort ye. Comfort ye, my people, said your God. You see that? Comfort the people. Comfort one another. Everybody, we going through hell and high waters right now. Right. With famine, with brothers and sisters losing their jobs, coronavirus, not wanting to take the mosquito bite. These things, these things are, are really, you know, brothers and sisters in this walk, we're going through some trials and tribulations. So what it looked like you over here speaking roughly and rash to the brothers and sisters that are already going through hell at home. How does that, how does that, you know what I'm saying? How does that make sense, y'all? You got to speak comfortable to your people, man. It's got to administer grace unto the hearers, man. You got to Season your speech with salt. Speak comfortably. Read verse 2. 
speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her. And cry unto her. Come on. That her welfare is accomplished. Come on. That her iniquity is pardoned. Come on. For she had received of the Lord. Lord, hand double for all her sins. You see that? So we, we, we going through trials, y'all. We being afflicted. We being afflicted. So you speak comfortably to the brothers and to the sisters. Where we at last scripture, Titus chapter 2 and verse 1. We're going to read on down and we're going to finish it up. Titus chapter 2 verse 1. You sisters, y'all familiar with this, with this scripture, right? I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure y'all familiar with this. Watch this. Read. Titus chapter 2 and verse 1. Come on. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. What's the first thing the Lord is saying right here? What's the first thing? He said, speak what? He said, speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. You see that? Speak those things that become sound doctrine, meaning good things. Read. That the aged man be sober, uh -huh. grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. You see that? So a lot of that, soberness, grave, temperate, sound in faith, charity, and patience. People could tell if they if you're if you're not sober with when they hear your speech. They hear you high, you're drunk. They're like, he's not sober. They could tell you're grave and temperate when you forgive. They could right. tell you're sound in faith when you use the scriptures and speak the oracles. They could tell you got charity and patience through your speech. They could tell when you don't have patience through your speech, when you're upset and you're quick to be angry. They're like, he ain't got no, he's not a, he don't act like an aged man in this truth. He's quick, he's quick to be angry. He's quick to anger. Read. The aged woman, likewise, that they be in behavior as become holiness. You see that? You got to be different. That holiness that comes that goes into you being different. You can't be the old woman. It ain't just talking about what you wear and what you put on and your head wrap. Your mouth has to be different. Read. Not false accusers. What the, how do you falsely accuse someone? With words. With the, with the words come out your mouth. Read. Not given to much wine. Where do you take, where do, where do you drink wine? Through your mouth, wow. read. <laughs> Teachers of good things. How do you teach people? With the mouth and the things that you say. That's why the tongue is a small member. The tongue is a small member, but it could be used for good or for great evil. That's what it could be used for, read. That they may teach the young women to be sober. That's right. Come on. To love their husbands. To love their husbands. Through what? Their actions and their speech. Mm -hmm. Read. To love their children. And to love their children. Read. To be discreet. Uh-huh. Ch chest. What is it? Chest. Chaste. 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 Uh-huh. Keepers at home. To be discreet and chaste. Meaning be humble, low-minded. You know what I mean? Not, not bold. All right? Like you was in the world, especially you sisters in in the East Coast, man. Yeah. Oh, Wearing man. Timberlands. Yeah, good. Cut that out, man. Read. <laughs> good. Uh huh. Obedient to their own husbands. Obedient to their own husbands. Come on. That the word of God be not blasphemed. You see that, so that you're not shaming the ministry of the Lord. You're not sh You're not. Oh, they could tell. Okay, she's with Israel United in Christ. That's you. You talking about those beautiful mm -hmm. sisters over there? With the head wraps and the dresses and the, and the uh, soft dancers, yeah, those those are the Israelite sisters. Are mm. oh, you talking about these brothers, uh, brothers that are at peace with all men? You talking about those brothers that look like royalty, that are keeping their beards, and you know they look organized? Yeah, that's Israel in Christ. Yeah, that's right. that way it's not shame in the ministry. Read, young men likewise, exhort to be sober minded. Read in all things, showing thyself. A pattern of good works. Meaning having a pattern of good conduct, of a good report. Read. And doctrine showing of corruptness, uh -huh. gravity, uh -huh. sincerity. Sincerity. That's heavy right there. You got to be genuine. You young men, you got to be genuine in this walk. Okay? Not putting in work for ulterior motives. Mm -hmm. You got to be genuine in this walk. Read. Last scripture. Sound spirit. That cannot be condemned. You see that sound speech that cannot be condemned. They can't say nothing about you. Read. That he that is of the contrary. That that person that is looking for evil in you. Read. 
part may be ashamed. May be ashamed because they looking for evil, trying to dig a ditch, trying to find out, trying to find some evil in you. The first place they're going to look is your speech, is your mouth, your words. What's coming out your mouth? That's what they're looking for. Read. Having no evil, having no evil thing to say of you. They ain't going to be able to find no evil thing to say of you. They're going to hate you for that. <laughs> mm. The, or they may be inspired by that. It can go away. All right? So all praises. A hey, talk is not cheap. All right? So mind your tongue, uh, Israel. All right? So that's the class. All praise to the Most High. Um, Donate to the Booster Club. All right? Donate to the Booster Club. Also, uh, support uh, IUIC TV. Download the app. All right? Make sure you're giving alms to your local churches. All right. Uh, there's more information on Israel United Christ and IUSC uh, social media platforms. More information going out in regards to Passover. So, um, you know, keep tabs on all those things so that you stay informed. Um, am I missing anything? Oh, uh, subscribe to IUIC Austin. Please help us out. Subscribe, IUIC Austin on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. All right. That way we can improve the algorithm so that more of these videos can go out. More brothers and sisters can Lord's will, uh, you know, be what do you call it? Be marked or, or actually come into the truth. All right. Of the Lord come the increase. We just plant seed Israel. All right. So with that, I'm Officer Hales. I'm Soldier Matthias. We got Soldier Aaron in the back. Shout out to the tech team. All praise for That's coming right. through, man. Uh, with that, we say shalom. shalom. No faking, I believe ain't no hating. It's right, you my nation. Christ coming back, be patient. Patient, 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 patient. We long suffering, that means we patient. We recovering. Awake the nation, change your mind, transformation, present God's lost presentation. Only way you get salvation, Christ gave us the demonstration. I ain't Haitian, I ain't black, I am Israel, that's a fact. My spirit